Hello everyone, welcome back to the Net Backup Sessions, our first ever digital summit where we're talking about all things data protection. So joining me back on the couch is Cliff Barcliffe. Cliff, welcome back. Great, can't wait for this session. Well, our session here, we're gonna be talking about optimizing cloud data protection. Cloud is your favorite? Well, it is, it is, right? Because everybody's talking about it, right? It's a technology trend everybody's chasing after. Well, when you talk to the field and work with customers, every conversation either starts or ends with, get me there, then help me once I'm in the cloud. Right. Cloud's everything. You know, as a matter of fact, Sugentia in product management, he and I sat down and had a conversation about the different use cases of helping customers get to the cloud, right? And specifically, he helped me understand how we help protect their assets as they're going along their cloud journey. We should take a look. Well, we have it teed up. Let's go ahead and watch. Let's take a look. Hey, so I'm here with Sujenthia Dandapat, who is a cloud uh, product manager here at Veritas. Uh, Want to talk about something you might be very interested in, right? Optimizing cloud data protection. Oh, yeah. All right, can you help me out on this? Sure. Okay. So I want to start off with just a direct question about this, but setting it up, you know, we hear about cloud all the time, right? CIOs are talking about it, how it's going to help the business, operations managers, you know, they're looking at it. We've been talking about a cloud technologies, it seems like forever. Are we done? Like, is, is everyone in the cloud now? Can we check that box? Oh, <laughs> and that, that's not how it hap it's working right now. So here, here, here's what happened, right? So there was this first wave in which developers, small teams were, you know, sort of putting up small workloads, some experiments in the cloud, and they were like, okay, this, you know, let's see what we can do there. Are the origins of shadow IT, Oh, right? yeah. Okay, So, right, so, so right. that has matured. Those workloads have matured. They have become better. Um, and then the CIOs, saw that trend and they realized, hey, I can move my critical workloads to the cloud. So that's what we are getting from our customers now. Like, I want to move my critical workloads to the cloud, how can you help? And production, production workloads. Production workloads that are up, you know. So three use cases mainly, mm -hmm. right? So one is backup to the cloud. Okay. Second is recovery in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And third is continued protection in the cloud. Got it, okay. All right, why don't we, you give me the three use cases, why don't we dig into those first? You said backup to the cloud. What's the use case there? What are they looking at? Right, so there are two workflows to getting data to the cloud. The first one is backup to the cloud, which is um, keeping a second copy in the cloud. That's uh -huh. one. And there's long-term retention in the cloud, it's, as in you age off like your seven-year, 10-year retention to the cloud, so that's it's like second. like your garage. You're just like putting it over in the corner, keeping it up there for a long time. Okay, all right. Right, so, so now, those are, you know, we've been doing that for some time now. Here's what we did last year. In last year, we started supporting more tiers. So. For example, AWS released Glacier Deep Archive. So okay. now we support uh, both Glacier and Glacier Deep Archive. That's one. And we also rewrote our backend. So now sending data to the cloud is faster. You're kind of hitting on costs and everything. Maybe, maybe it would help if we had like an example, maybe some numbers so we can get a, a good understanding of what we're talking about moving data to the cloud. Right, let, let me give you okay. an example on the right. board right here. So uh, last couple of months ago, we were working with one of the largest uh, logistics companies in the world. Okay. Um, and they were like, we have several petabytes of data to move to the cloud, what do I do? Right. So let's take an example of their uh, mixed workloads. So we had, they had some Linux workloads, they had some SQL, they had some VMware, mm -hmm. they want to move to the cloud. Uh, let's zoom, uh, we're talking about just just one petabyte, which is probably a fraction of what right. they want to move to the but cloud. But it's nice, easy math, okay. <laughs> I like that, all right, it's good. So, so, what did, so if they, when they were first uh, evaluating this, uh, when we were helping them, is the fully hydrated, fully busy pipe moving data to the cloud okay. was about $26,000. Okay, so that's right. moving one petabyte to the cloud. That's a monthly charge. Right. Okay, all right. Now you add net backup dedupe technology. And oh, I see what you're doing with the dotted line, right? That's the dedupe. Right, that's a dedupe. Okay. Only small bits of data, mm -hmm. uh, all compressed, and we calculated, and that was, that's a. That's a significant difference. 95%. Got it, so okay, so. So you're you're saying here not only we're, we're just we're sending we're sending less data but we're also not using as much bandwidth right because how much data and bandwidth is both in that cost calculation you get these uh, direct connects and express routes and all of those right you not only pay for the pipe but you're also paying for the data transfer cost itself got it okay all right so you get two for the price of one there nice all right so that's so that's ninety five percent savings that's significant now is this is this unique to any one cloud provider 30 or? plus cloud providers. 30 so plus. 30 plus cloud providers. That's why it's written right there. I, I stopped, stopped counting out of 30. 
Well, right. I know. I, I, only, I only think I could name 30 if I had to. <laughs> okay. so, so, you know, take your choice and we'll make it happen. Well, choice. There you go. You got lots of choice, and that's, that's a good thing we offer the customer. Okay, this helps. This makes sense. And now, 95% right, more efficient. That's where I can see CIOs, finance people, everybody really getting excited about this. Okay, that's a good story. I like that. Okay. So now we've taken the data um, from corporate. We've, we've got it up here into the cloud. Um, but you know, here at Veritas, we know, right, we don't back up for the sake of backing up. We back up so that we can... Recover? Recover, exactly. So, so how do I recover if I'm talking about running in the cloud? Right. So remember, we talked about moving data. It's just the data. It's we're also adding metadata. The way we want to talk about it is self-describing objects, right? Okay. So you could be sending that data for a thousand years, <laughs> and at the end of which you say, "Hey, I need to recover." All that you need to do is attach a new net backup domain, and that domain can be in your data center. The domain can be in your cloud. We don't care, and attach the buckets to that, and right. we will give you back your entire VM, the data with it you back up and running. So the metadata coming in, that, that tells that, that backup or that, that information that we've got, mm -hmm. it tells the new net backup instance what it is. It can read it in and it can do whatever it needs to do from a recovery standpoint. Oh yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, the other part to recovery though is, we're talking about the largest of large enterprises, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just one or 10 VMs, it's thousands of VMs, yeah. multi-layered applications, right? So there is a, there's an order, there's a sequence to recovery. It's the entire data center, you have to bring up your you know, databases first before you bring up your web servers, stuff like that, right? Uh, we can orchestrate that, and it's important, right? You want to have confidence in your recovery. We can give your entire data center back and not just one or 10 VMs. A lot of customers have to be able to, I mean, there's regulations, compliance, all that kind of uh, overhead that they've got to right? deal with, but they've got to be able to certify or prove that they can recover. Right. Is that something we help them do? We here? can help you rehearse. We can help you give proof that, hey, my recovery works. Right. And we're not in, we're not affecting production whatsoever. Nothing. Business is still going on as usual. Right. Oh, okay. That's fantastic. So now we've got that going on up here. We've done a recovery. We've got not just data, we've got applications, we've got workloads running here in the cloud. Don't critical, we need to protect yeah. that just the same as if it was in the data? Critical center? workloads. You're talking about a SQL server, right? right. It's production data. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to continue to protect that. And you can use existing technologies. We have also added cloud-native technologies to the stack. What that does for you is, you know, um, we have cloud architectures. There is a security model. There is a access control. Mm -hmm. We are taking all of that into consideration, right? So when you go to your cloud team, uh, or we go to the other team, security teams, whatever have you, they can feel confident that we are aligning to what their vision is uh, with cloud and cloud architectures. Nice, okay. All right, so if I summarize this, we've got them protected and backed up at, uh, at, at, at the, the corporate data center, the core data center. We help them very effective, effectively and efficiently move data into the cloud. We can help them recover here in the cloud. And then once they've recovered there, we can keep them protected. That sounds like a heck of a, heck of a story. All right. All right. I like it. Well, that, Sanchenthia, thank you. That, that helped me a lot. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you taking the time to show me. Sure. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. All right. So, Sanchenthia did a really good job. What do you think? Uh, it was awesome. I learned quite a few things. Mm -hmm. But I'm a hands-on person. Uh, I like to see it actually work its thing. So, okay. I spent time with Sunita, our senior developer manager of cloud data protection. She's got a live demo teed up. A demo? Nice, can we take a look? Let's take a look. Hey, Sunita, thanks for being here with us. Hey, Clifford. So we just heard a deep dive discussion on the customer cloud journey and what NetBackup does to help them, but all of us, we want to see it in action. What can we do for my customer to help them uh, when their assets are in the cloud, make them feel comfortable, but also show them how we can actually restore those assets? Sure. So what you're looking for is a cloud protection workflow. Okay. Here you go. So we have cloud as an option here. So I have my own dedicated place for my cloud admin. Right. And then you get to see that we are protecting two clouds, AWS and Azure. Okay. And here in the virtual machines tab, you get to list all the assets that, that are being protected. So these assets, they're self-discovered. Um, this is what a customer would see just by having the product running. Correct. And there are a lot. So I get to search by my name, that's how I tag them, and find out the assets that I'm going to work with. So if you can see, okay. there are a bunch that are not protected, and there are f there's one that here you see that's already being protected. Okay, great, so okay. you're gonna show one that is not protected? Yes. And we're gonna add it in. 
Right. But we're going to talk about how applications work. Okay, great. Okay? Applications so, more interesting. Right, right. So if the, you know that there is an application, you basically have to select the host, configure the application, connect with it, and then configure the application. Okay. okay? I have some that are already configured. So here's the applications tab, and you get to see the applications. Okay? All right. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to protect one. So I'm going to select the application, add protection, and select the protection plan. So protection plans, these are already configured. We're just adding an asset into these already configured plans. That's right. Okay. And I say protect. Okay? Done. Yes. That was quick. Right. So that means now the asset will be scheduled for protection. Correct. So what's the next part? So the next part is recovery, right? So let's go and see how recovery works. I'm back again with the asset list, and I'm going to pick a particular asset that has already been protected, okay? Okay. I go to the protection points tab, and there you go. So I have a calendar, calendar with some dots on it. Dots must mean that those are recovery points on those dates. That's right. So here's a whole list of recovery points. Right. Now what? I'm going to go back to yesterday. I select a particular restore point, from yesterday, and I say recover. I have two options here, original and alternative. So what would I do with those two different options? Why? Guess. Oh, so I guess recover in place must mean ransomware recovery as a good example. Something that I, I don't need, I need to put it right back where it was, and the other must, must mean like DevOps or downstream data processing. Right, and I'm going to pick the alternate location, which is a test and dev option. Well, these are a list of targets yes. where I'm going to put the application back into. Correct. Okay. And I'm going to pick a particular target, and that's actually a virtual machine where this particular database will be restored. Okay. I pick the virtual machine, and I say start recovery. There you go. So it's so successful now. What's a customer going to see once they've started the recovery process? Right. So you have the option to go to the jobs page, and then you get to see... That the restore and is there's running. my running man that I want to know that I'm actually processing a restore. That's right. Well, Sina, thank you so much. This was great. I learned a lot. Always like to see it in action. Most welcome. Hey, that was an awesome demo. Thanks for showing us. All right, joining us now, we've got Ben DeQual, who's part of the Microsoft Azure engineering team. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Ben, we're going to have a quick chat about um, some of the value props. So, uh, from your view, what are the you know, one or two big value props between Veritas and Microsoft Azure that customers are looking for? The hybrid protection of data is, is a big thing here. We talk about backing up to cloud. Customers become pretty frustrated with the inefficient process of managing tape, trying to get data verified that sits off on tape on off-premises. And then also, if it ever comes to the stage of having to recall that data, it's not easy to do. Um, it's also very hard to get value out of that data after the, after the fact and start to maybe run analytics or other workloads there. So when we look at what Veritas do with their backup products, they're really highly effective data protection products that take customer virtual machines, databases, large unstructured data sets into the cloud in a really efficient manner. Okay, so, let's, so we talked about those two things, going to and then once to there. So let's start with just going to. What's the... What's the great use case? What, what is that value that customers get with a, a partnership when they're going to the cloud? Yeah, look, Veritas and Microsoft have been very tightly partnered. Um, I'm in the engineering group, and we're working constantly with the product managers and, and developers inside the Veritas team to get that synergy between the platforms. So we build that up. Um, we de verify, we test, we get early access to products and features on our site. Uh, when it, what, what Veritas is doing then by taking that data into Azure is it's taking into a, a platform which has got infinite scale that you can go and take as much data as you want to, have really efficient ways of taking data copies, taking just increment snapshot-based data into cloud. And then that data can be taken down to tiers where it's extraordinarily low cost offline storage and our archive tier um, and, and move from even from there up to say other tiers as well like our cool or hot or premium where you can get low latency, high performance workloads as well on that data set. So you can really do whatever you want. You can get the data online and have the data online continuously run analytics and reports against it. It just gives you flexibility to go and do that and then also not have to go and manage tape. So it makes a lot of sense. So we help them get it there and put it in the place that's the most efficient cost 
and performance for, the, for their needs. So great, so once they're there, uh, they want to run workloads. They want to you know, use the rest of the scale, the compute scale. So where's the value prop there? Yeah, a lot of people start up with backup to cloud because it's a clear TCO saving and it's pretty simple to do. Once they're, they're, they're starting that sort of journey, they'll then start to run other workloads up in the cloud too. So we will see people bring up virtual machines, SQL databases, um, they may run large-scale analytics or SAP environments inside of Azure. And, and Veritas there is giving that customer the same interface, that same net backup, backup exec console inside of Azure so they can actually go and protect those data sets in a similar manner. You could take that data from the east coast of the US to the west coast of the US to make sure you have um, backup resiliency across multiple regions as well as in that region plus what you expect with indexes, catalogs, and and point in time restore. So is that part of that shared responsibility? Well, Azure gives all that infrastructure that scales um, and it's always there and always on. Veritas gives the data protection and the choice of moving data around within the cloud um, to, vis to, to suit their needs. Yeah, exact, exactly right. We have that scale, we have things up and down the stack, but Veritas are providing that consistent data management platform. Um, and, and then as we see these workloads take off as well. It starts to get interesting about what can we do with the data. Uh, if we've only moved 5% of production data maybe to cloud, 95% is on-premises, you will have that full data set in the cloud with Veritas. What else can you do with the data once it's up there? Looking at things like DR or maybe dev test, or what about analytics on large data sets? You, you haven't migrated to cloud, but you can use the elastic scale of cloud compute to run against. Awesome, so, so it's nice giving those customers a choice, mm -hmm. on-prem, the cloud, and operate the same way so that they can scale their operations and not have to refactor their operations for data protection. Yeah, you don't have to go and retrain someone in how to use all of cloud to go and use something like Azure as that really cost efficient, flexible platform to take data to. I think like a really strong story we've got you know, between Veritas and Microsoft Azure. Cool, all right. Ben, well, it was a pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for joining and, and helping us understand that better. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the time. I really appreciate you having me on. All right, cheers. Cheers. Okay, for those of you who want to continue the conversation, head on over to Vox, where we've got our Hey Ava session going, where you're able to ask Veritas anything. And also, don't forget to go over to veritas.com slash netbackupsessions, where you can enter to win AWS reInvent tickets, as well as a behind the scenes tour of our Roseville, Minnesota office, where you can meet with NetBackup product managers and engineers. And lastly, don't forget, on October 31st, our next episode, we'll be talking about protecting all the things. So until then, take care, and we'll see you on the next episode.